Hey guys, thanks for checking in. Well, today I'm on a brand new listing in Polk County, Wisconsin. We're near the town of Cushing. We're looking at a farm that's about 77 acres. I'm gonna take you through this property. It's got an old barn, some buildings, a uh, small pond, and a little bit of timber. A lot of grassland and some farm fields all ready for you to come and build your dream hobby farm, perhaps turn it into a hunting farm. On today's episode of The American Landman. Okay, well, we're in the edge of the yard of this old house. This is owned by a lady named Karen from the looks of it. I need to find her and I, there, I'll use some of my tools to look her up and I'll probably go to the township informations uh, or the county information center, see if I can find out anything. I'll try to get a hold of her. She very, very well may want to sell this property and it would be really wise to do that now that I'm selling the rest of the property. But on the other hand, she might want to keep it. And if she does, what are we going to do with this shared well? We're gonna, make, gonna do with the electric and all these other things that come with owning a farm, because I'm sure this was part of that at one point, and somehow it got divided off. Just something we're gonna have to, gonna have to look into, but definitely we gotta know what's going on before we get into a deal on this property. All right, well, we're down in this little pocket of cover here, and I'm seeing cattails, indication of some uh, moisture, and I can see a little frozen ice down here, but. There's definitely a lot of deer sign down here and you can see why they're coming down here and they're getting out of the wind. Uh, we have top fields all around us, all planted in hay. But if this was beans and corn, this could definitely be some great security cover. Looks like we've got a little tamarack swamp there. But uh, these deer are most definitely down in here. You can see the access trail right here going up that we just came down. And this is their little security cover out of the wind. Nice little tucked away pocket. Well, this property's got a 40 on the, I think it'd be the east end and about a 37 acres on the south or on the west end. And I think this would be a great spot to maybe if you want to build a home. And there might even be some subdivision capability because there's road access to the south and then there's road access where I came in up here. And this could all be built on and you could maybe subdivide this from multiple angles. You have two points of access, which is always very key on developing and you just got to check with the township and the town of Sterling and I've had some mixed reviews one guy I called up he says we don't want any subdivisions on those properties you know and I said okay well I'm not a developer and another guy said yeah you know what do you want to do um tell us a plan get a survey and do do all the steps and yeah not a problem so it really depends on you know who you reach and if you do the process right but I definitely think this definitely has a possibility to be subdivided. But if you didn't want to do that, man, look at this. Beautiful field. Plant corn and beans in here. Maybe some specialty crops. Could be really nice. Okay, well, I'm back in the timber portion of this. And I want to talk about some super highways. Check this out. And they're everywhere in here. It's just got a little corner of timber. Um, wetland crop fields, big valley, big drainage coming through here. And these deer, they're just, they're in there all over in here. I'm seeing beds everywhere and they're just super highways like that. And that's the nice thing about these properties. You know, sometimes these little hidey holes, little little hideaway spots, they don't look like much, but man, you get back in here and the deer are in here. They're using it because nobody else comes here either. That's why they're here. So working our way through here, taking the photos. You know, a lot of agents, I'll tell you that the, the, the sales slow down this time of the year because we're, as I, as I film this, is January 14th. And, um, but that's not true at all. I think what slows down is they slow down. They don't get out here and look at these properties because I'm listing a lot of properties right now. And um, I love doing this because look at this trail right here. Look at that trail right there. Let me turn the phone, phone around. Look at that trail right there. I mean, you can really see the habitat. So it's a good time of the year to get out here because sometimes even sellers aren't as motivated to hold on to a property this time of the year and they're a little motivated uh, and they'll sell it quicker, maybe a little less price because they feel, figure they're going to be holding on to it longer. That's not always the case that they're motivated that way, but it can be. But I really like buying these properties now because it's ugly. It doesn't show very well. There's less competition out here and I buy them now and then I fix them up in the spring I get it really looking good in the summer and then next fall, so six months hold time, I put it back on the market. 
right as it's heating up. And when you do that, that's when you get the higher prices. So look for these properties now, guys. Get out there and walk and look around and put the feelers out and talk to people, kiss some babies and shaking hands. That's how you get these properties. We gotta get through here, come on, Lucy. Now, I'm in the north, uh, I think, what am I in? I'm in the west corner of this property. I'm gonna have my editor stick a little map right here to show you where I'm at. And when you look at these videos, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot here right now. But when I get back in here, I mean, here's another trail. Look at that. I mean, I'm showing you guys a lot of deer sign and there's some decent trees like this one to get up into, get a great tree stand up there. And there's a bunch of them in here. Um, and, and what's nice about this is that nobody's thinking about it. Nobody comes here. They just go flying by this. And this area where I'm at in Polk County actually puts out some pretty decent bucks. It's not on the radar, but it's really close to everybody. We're probably an hour from the Twin Cities to get here. Uh, the Twin Cities Metro, Minneapolis, St. Paul is our big market influencer. And a lot of people are looking for these places to get out of the Twin Cities, get to a place really quick. And while this is a hay farm right now, it could be put into habitat, get some switchgrass, a couple of years, get some, you know, spruce and white pine growing there. You'll have some woody cover, some structure. And then this whole thing changes. It adds a lot of this woody, you know, security cover out in those fields. Put in some food plots, some corn, maybe build a house. I mean, that's how you improve these properties. And you got to you got to look beyond what you got and you got to, you know, think about what it could be. Well, there's a big feature here that I'm getting to, and there's a wetland that they drained back in the 20s, and it could be a nice pond. I'm going to take you there, and I'm going to show you about show you that next. Okay, so we left the timber, and now we're out where this pond is. And this is actually a pretty sizable lake, but it was drained many years ago. And somewhere down here, they tell me that there's a pipe that's pulling the water out of here. For some reason, back in the early part of last century, they drained this pond. Maybe they were gonna try to farm it. Now, this would be something you'd wanna check with the DNR on. Can you plug that up and create a new lake there? Because, you know, up on the hillside there, or maybe way over in the distance, if you can see it, the farm, there's a lot of, you know, elevated uh, spots that could be really good building sites. And who wouldn't wanna look at a lake? But when you're buying this and it's a dry pond that's just a wetland, it doesn't say have the same value. So if you're looking for a property that you could add value, value adds can really make a property more valuable. Plug up this lake and get it filled up again. Okay, well, here you go. Just like he said, they had plugged it up that tube was probably part of the drain system and there's the drainage going out of there so underneath here are some tubes that used to be and there's the wetland and i see remnants of tubes down here so he was not lying and it's just probably leaking it's not done very well there's an old tube right there a little concrete tube and I'm sure there's more, you know, water getting out here, but it's, it's flowing right down here. So you plug this up, this water will come up to probably about here and you'll have a really nice lake all the way around. Now, I don't always know the history of these old farms, but I'm back up in the area where somebody had a farm here at one point. Cool old barn, looks like a couple outbuildings. Uh, there's a home that's not part of this property right there actually another owner owns a piece of land i'm going to call it about an acre i'm not sure if it's exactly an acre but when you buy these properties you got to kind of look into that you know there's an owner that has a parcel there there's another owner that has a parcel here and these buildings all look like they're somewhat related to each other somehow the farmstead right so my guess is that there may be a well here i'm told that there's a shared well agreement i'm gonna have to look into that i'm told that there's probably a septic here that makes sense uh, or at least an outhouse. I have no idea if any of this has been taken care of properly and it's something you gotta look into. And a lot of times it's kind of buyer beware. It's not really easy to find this information. So I'm gonna look into this as best I can. I'm probably gonna call the township to see what I can find. But when you're a buyer, you're gonna have to look into this kind of stuff. You just never know what you're gonna find. When you have old buildings, it can be a plus as far as you know aesthetic value. It could be a negative. You gotta tear it down and deal with you know toxic waste and whatnot. So make sure you know what you're doing when you have old farms like this. Now this is probably an old corn crib put corn on this side and have corn on this side and we're going to walk up in here and see what we see sometimes you find some cool treasures in here uh, sometimes this wood is still good and i'd say this is 
pretty solid. And uh, other times you find raccoons, like right there. <laughs> Lucy's going to get into it. But uh, just some cool history. These old buildings like this, it's just fun to come and explore them, I think. Now, personally, I love these old barns. I mean, they're just cool. Nowadays, you have the plain, you know, rectangle pole barns, but these have history and they've got character. And this one actually looks like it's in fairly decent condition because they put some metal siding on the side, protected that wood, and the foundation looks to be poured. So when you have a poured foundation versus the rock foundation, they tend to last a little longer. If the animals get under them, these are all a little bit more structurally sound. And they don't come down as quickly because as soon as that foundation goes, this whole thing's coming down. I think we should go in there and take a look at it. All right, let's go see what this looks like. Go in there. I said Lucy in ahead of me. Any animals? <laughs> She'll scare them out. All right, this is pretty cool. We're not going to see a whole lot in here. And frankly, I don't want to get too far in here. But uh, sometimes you can find some really cool stuff. Old signs, rusty gold, as they say. But can you imagine having a life in here? A guy spent many, many hours in here with his cows, just eking out a living. Probably a dozen cows could be in here. And honestly, that's about all the room that there is in here. And we're not going to go in here too much, but cool history for sure. All right, well, let's get out of there. I don't want to step on a rusty nail or something, but man, I tell you what cool history in there. I love these old barns and they're just a sign of a bygone era. Very cool. I would guess and this is probably built, I don't know, from the looks of the building, probably in the 40s maybe, you know, 50s. There's an old house. We're going to take a look at that. We're not going to be able to go in it because it's not on the property. As I said, it's owned by a small, uh, another owner owns a small piece, but cool little place. This could be yours. Now, some buildings have a little bit of utility left, like this one here. Probably wants a machine shed, but it looks like now the owner's storing bales of hay inside there. And as I was told, or they asked, what happens to those hay bales? I said, look, use it until you make uh, get an offer. Best case scenario, get them out of here. But it, it, a lot of times this type of stuff stays uh, with the owner and they'll get it out of here. So if you're out buying properties, uh, you got to ask, you know, what's going to happen to all this? Also, as far as the agricultural goes, here mainly what they're doing is they're cutting hay. And they asked me, can we keep farming, keep cutting? And I said, yes, up until basically the day that you sell it, all this grass and all the crops are yours. If there's corn and beans out there, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll negotiate into the deal that the farmer gets to harvest his corn or his beans for that season. And then the ownership transfers to the the buyer after that. And that's a lot of negotiation there. That's generally what I do, but he wants these bales of hay, he gets to keep them. Now, oftentimes I'm on these old farm, there's old machinery like this, and this actually looks like it's still usable. Uh, it probably doesn't go with the sale. Um, it's something you can negotiate into your price though. Uh, even if they didn't put it on my listing and I might be showing it like I am now, I don't always know if it's staying with the sale. So as a buyer, we're gonna write this into the deal if in fact you want it. It might actually work. It might be something you could put to use and it might have a little bit of value. So if you see machinery, don't assume that it's going with the deal. Sometimes it has to be written in the deal to be part of the deal. Well guys, I'm gonna wrap this up. So old farms, you know, great nostalgia. Love seeing them, just a glimpse of an era that's long gone. And they hold a certain amount of romantic value, but on the flip side is you're probably gonna have to clear out all this stuff because it's just barely salvageable, if salvageable at all. So make sure you take that into account when you're buying these properties, you factor it into your purchase price and you don't wanna get yourself in a bad position, but you could have a great looking property at the same time. So if you're interested in this property, by the time you see this video, this is for sale. I'm in Polk County, Wisconsin, near the town of Cushing. I'm about an hour and a half out from the Twin Cities, a little bit less, St. Croix River Valley, great price, a great place, beautiful area, riding trails not too far away, just a cool little place. Buy it, farm it, fishing, hunting, everything. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Neil Hogger, and I'm a land specialist with Whitetail Properties Real Estate, and this is the American Landman Podcast.